viewers and welcome to another edition of the President's Diary, a monthly uh, television program that brings you the activities of the President in pursuit of the National Development Plan. To begin this edition, uh, we'll take a look at the massive um, grand launching of the COVID-19 vaccination in the Gambia, which was held at the State House earlier this month. His Excellency President Adam Barrow formally launched the mass COVID-19 vaccination campaign on my tent marking a significant step forward in the government's coordinated efforts to combat the pandemic. The Gambia received the first consignment of uh, 36,000 doses of the AstraZeneca vaccine through the COVAX facility, thanks to our collaboration with UNICEF, Gambia, Gavi, the Vaccine Alliance, and the WHO. In his launching statement, President Baru described the launch as a positive step towards um, fighting against uh, coronavirus. He extolled the efforts of frontline workers who have put their lives on the line to help the most vulnerable people during the pandemic, while urging the public to remain vigilant despite the availability of vaccines as new strains of the virus emerge around the world. Here is an excerpt of his statement. It is a relief, therefore, that suitable vaccines have been discovered, tested and approved by reliable experts. I am sure all of us wish that the vaccines were discovered earlier to save more lives. Thankfully, the Gambia has received 36,000 doses of AstraZeneca vaccine under the COVAX package. This is remarkable. We thank you. Let me reassure you that the World Health Organization, WHO, has confirmed the safety and effectiveness of the vaccine for the prevention and control of COVID-19. On behalf of the government and the people of the Gambia, I express sincere gratitude to the Global Vaccine Alliance UNICEF and WHO for this important development. Also, we have received 10,000 doses of the senior pharma vaccine from the government of Senegal. I thank my brother, His Excellency, President Makisal, for this kind gesture. Mr. Ambassador, we thank the President and the people of Senegal for the gesture and support. In another development, the World Bank has provided resources to procure up to 40% of the country's vaccine requirement. It will complement the 20% already secured through the COVAX arrangement. The fourth batch of lot is available and will be rolled out today. This is a positive step towards realizing my government's urgent and passionate desire for full protection of every citizen against COVID-19. Knowing that the coronavirus knows no boundary, let us not relent. Despite the availability of, the, of vaccines, new variants of the virus continue to emerge around the world, which should compel us to remain vigilant. We must continue to act responsibly and ensure that we wear a mask properly in public, wash our hands regularly, avoid hand shaking, and practice social distancing. President Adam Obaru became the first uh, senior government official to take the inoculation shot, which was followed by other prominent figures, assuring Gambians that the vaccines are safe and approved by the World Health Organization. All right, viewers, away from the launch of the vaccination campaign, let's take a look at a series of uh, virtual events uh, that President Baru took part in. 
one of which was the 58 um, ordinary session of the ECOWAS heads of state and government, where he re-echoed his government's commitment to the ongoing security sector reform. He stressed his government's dedication to a sustainable security sector reform that the engineers, the mission, structures, mindsets, and culture of security institutions to make them more responsive, affordable, and accountable based on democratic norms and principles. Leaders of the regional bloc met via video conferencing to discuss um, issues um, on peace, security, and the impact of the coronavirus on member countries. They made a strong call for unity and, and collaboration to be able to cope the merit of challenges confronting the bloc. Similarly, the president also uh, participated in the 38th um, ordinary session of the African Union, where he highlighted Gambia's progress in the areas of human rights, governance, and the effects of the COVID-19. He called on his counterparts to speak with one voice, stating that Africa's vibrant contribution to global initiatives on sustainable and security is crucial. The past month has witnessed a flurry of diplomatic engagements where foreign nationals accredited to the Gambia presented their letters of credence to His Excellency President Adam Barrow. The engagements, dotted with colorful ceremonies, demonstrate the respect and recognition the Gambia enjoys on the global stage under the leadership of President Barrow. Since assuming office, the administration's foreign policy is focused on strengthening the Gambia's standing in the Committee of Nations, which saw an increasing number of foreign governments establishing ties with the Gambia. Bearing in mind the importance of such relations, the President wasted no time in engaging partners in restoring the country's lost glory on the global stage. Anchored on building international partnerships, peace, security, and development, the Barrow administration continues to explore relationships on bilateral level as well as cooperation with multilateral organizations. Consequently, the Gambia enjoys reinforced political and financial support by the international community in continuing its democratic transition building on strong democratic institutions, respect for human rights, rule of law, and sustainable shared economic growth. The Gambia's bilateral relations with foreign countries spans decades, some as far back as the independence era. Even though countries like the Republic of Serbia accredited an ambassador to the Gambia for the first time, a host of other countries accredited all have long-standing and strong bilateral ties with the Gambia. Diplomats from different countries all clearly expressed commitment to forging bilateral ties with the Gambia based on mutual interests. <music> the essence of building strong bilateral ties is to ensure there is strong partnership between countries. A clear example of such diplomatic ties is the Gambia's relationship with the People's Republic of China. Such a relationship was demonstrated when the Chinese ambassador to the Gambia, Ma Jianchun, led a team of Chinese medical experts to the presidency. The team was in the country to consolidate the Gambia's gains in the fight against COVID-19 and to ensure public safety in the pandemic as well as present medicine and medical equipment for epidemic control. President Barrow commented on the excellent relationship with the People's Republic of China while appreciating the timely support rendered to his government since he assumed leadership in 2017. He expressed gratitude to his Chinese counterpart, His Excellency Xi Jinping, for fulfilling the pledge he made to his government. Still on the bilateral ties that the Gambia strives on in the region and beyond, perhaps the most important of such relationships is with the Republic of Senegal. Anchored on brotherly ties between the two leaders, President Barrow earlier this month received a delegation from his Senegalese counterpart who came to deliver 10,000 doses of the COVID-19 vaccine. According to the head of the delegation, Dr. Anet Njai, the vaccines are a gesture from President Sal to support the country in the fight against the pandemic, stressing that the vaccines will further strengthen the bilateral relations between the two countries. <music> In February, President Barrow received the special uh, representative of the United uh, Nations Secretary General and uh, head of the United Nations Office for West Africa and the Sahel, Dr. Ibn Chambers, at the State House in Banjul. According to Chambers, he was in the country to show solidarity and strong support of the United Nations to the Gambia and its people in these challenging times. 
Moreover, to inform President Barrow that the UN agencies in the country are ready to support his administration in overcoming the challenges. Uh, my delegation and I have just had the privilege of being received by uh, President of the Republic of the Gambia, His Excellency Adam Barrow, and it offered us the opportunity uh, for once again renewing to the President the solidarity and the strong support of the United Nations to the Gambia and its people in these times of uh, multiple challenges. Um, we all know that uh, with the COVID-19 pandemic, uh, Africa as a whole, Gambia in particular, and our West Africa sub-region uh, is facing a health crisis because we uh, are all dealing with COVID. Uh, you can see all of you journalists wearing masks. I've just taken off mine to speak to you. Um, and uh, it has also added to the economic uh, difficulties that we have, the challenges with uh, unemployment, especially of our young people, uh, the gender dimension, uh, challenges uh, with uh, a lot of uh, dropouts, especially of girl children when schools are closed and there are restrictions, uh, etc. So the UN is fully in solidarity with the Gambia and will continue to work through our agencies such as WHO, uh, UNDP, UNICEF, all our agencies to support the Gambia to face uh, these challenges. And for the Gambia, we are not unaware. Being a tourist country, the additional burden that it has brought about. And so we hope that the Gambian people are a bit understanding that these are special moments that we are going through. And um, we hope also that vaccines will be made available. And the UN is always launching an appeal with the partners not to forget developing countries, such as the Gambia. We know that the COVAX, COVAX arrangement will provide some vaccines, but uh, tourist-dependent countries such as Gambia need additional special attention to cope with uh, this pandemic which has brought so much disruption especially in the tourism sector of course uh, this year is an election year so naturally everybody is uh, uh, focusing on the preparations that are being made to ensure that at the end of the year on 4th december we'll have peaceful credible transparent elections we have uh, visited uh, the Independent Electoral Commission, the IEC, and we are satisfied with the preparations that are being made. Of course, there's still some work to be done. We have also consulted with other stakeholders. We're in Parliament to find out about the constitutional review process and uh, uh, how Parliament will ensure that they work in a timely manner so that everything will be on track. Um, in that regard, uh, we're all following the consultations being undertaken with all political parties and leaders and actors, uh, consultations led by former Nigerian President Goodluck Jonathan. And I should say here that the UN supports this initiative. Uh, we're happy that the ECOWAS at their last summit also through their full weight behind it. So we urge all political actors to show flexibility and understanding so that uh, we can once again put this track on course so that we can move forward and I reach, uh, reach a consensus, a wide consensus to allow this uh, constitution to be adopted and uh, in time so that uh, at the end of the year, uh, we can have elections that Gambians will be proud of. Uh, this is a new chapter in the history of the country, the new democratic dispensation, with a lot of reforms that are uh, commendable, highly commendable. The National Human Rights Commission is functioning very well. The truth and reconciliation process is ongoing. Security sector reform. So, 
there's a lot of uh, positive uh, achievements that Gambia can show uh, for the, this period since the new dispensation. So let us all uh, uh, partners working with uh, the Gambia continue to consolidate this uh, democratic gains which uh, all Gambians should be proud of. And we appreciate the leadership of His Excellency Mr. President and want to assure him that he can count on the UN, the entire UN system, all the agencies. We are here to support Mr. President, the Gambian government and the Gambian people to move forward with uh, consolidating the, the gains that have been made. Thank you very much. In a similar engagement, uh, President Adam Abaro received at the State House uh, the Minister for Foreign Affairs of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, Zubairu Dada, who was at the presidency as a special envoy of the Nigerian President Muhammad Buhari. After a closed-door meeting with President Barrow, the special envoy disclosed to the media that he came to deliver a goodwill message from President Buhari, stating that it is a message of love from brother to brother. Viewers, uh, you are reminded that uh, this is the President's diary. Now, away from the diplomatic scene, um, let's take a look at some of the stories uh, in the home front. As the Gambia government continues its search for competent Gambians to serve in the civil service, President Adam Abaru presided over the swearing in of the Permanent Secretary at the Ministry of Finance and Economic Affairs, Abdullah Jalo the Solicitor General and Legal Secretary Husseino uh, Tomasi and a member of the Public Service Commission Kanye Ture. The three officials took the prescribed oath of due execution of office, allegiance and secrecy. In his statement, President Barrow stated the importance of having committed honest and dedicated Gambians in the civil service for high performance and effective delivery, while urging the appointees to serve in the best interest of the Gambia. <music> Following their promotions in 2020, uh, President Adam Obaru, in a solemn ceremony, decorated officers to the ranks of Lieutenant General, Major General, and Brigadier General, respectively. The officers, Chief of Defense Staff, Yankuba Drame, Deputy Chief of Defense Staff, Mamad Cham, Commander of the Republican National Guard, Turo Jaune, and Commander Game National Army, Usman Gomez, constitute the apex decision-making body responsible for the daily operations of the Gambia Armed Forces. In his statement as the Commander-in-Chief, President Barrow said the appointment of the officers is based on merit, dedication to duty, and the trust and loyalty earned by the decorated officers. As trusted officers, it is incumbent upon you and all those under your command to continue to respond to the security needs and aspirations of the Gambian people. These call for acquainting themselves with the security sector reform program, guided by the national security policy and the national security sector strategy 2020-2024. Therefore, Gambia Armed Forces should be proud always to execute its duties with honor and patriotic service to the country, especially during critical and sensitive process of rebuilding the nation and reasserting ourselves as a people. The Chief of Defense Staff, Lieutenant General Yanko Badrame, in his vote of thanks, commended the President for approving the promotions in the Gambia Armed Forces since coming into office in 2017. While applauding the president for prioritizing the creation of a professional Gambia Armed Forces devoid of politics and tribal sentiments, the CDS assured that they would continue to strive hard to meet his expectations. In a separate but related engagement, President Adam Obaru presided over the symbolic handing over of khakis to the Gambia Armed Forces following the procurement of 28 vehicles earmarked for possible UN deployment of the Gambia Armed Forces to UN mission. This is in part a fulfillment of one of the UN's table of equipment required for the deployment of a quick reaction force company. 
President Adam Obaru received the national under-20 team at the State House in Banjul after their victory at the Wafu tournament in Senegal. The players, along with their coaches, technical team, president and officials of the Gambia Football Federation, were accompanied to the State House by the Minister of Youth and Sports and his staff, as well as officials from the National Youth Council. President Baro presented a check of $2 million to the under-20 Scorpions while expressing joy at receiving the team who emerged as winners of the Waffle Trophy. He encouraged the young Scorpions to keep working hard because hard work pays off. <music> as part of events marking the Gambia's 56th independence anniversary, President Adam Obaru inaugurated the 20 megawatts power plant in the West Coast region in Bekama. The more than 28 million project, jointly funded by the Islamic Development Bank and the government of the Gambia, aims to resolve power capacity gaps in the country and serve as a catalyst for achieving and sustaining daily supply of electricity throughout the country. President Barrow stressed in his statement that the power plant stems from his government's conviction that electricity is a key driver of economic growth. Here is an excerpt of his statement. This power plant project result from the government's belief that energy is a key driver of economic development. Thus, it has to serve as leverage to raise living standards and reduce poverty in the country. The project stands out as an order means of accelerating the country's key infrastructure investments to empower Gambian citizens to access to essential services. It is only through such his development strides that we can attain and sustain the level of economic growth we desire. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, the rapid increase in the generation capacity of NAREC and the expansion of its service within the past four years has been quite tactical. We are convinced it takes such innovative strategies to rekindle hopes and uplift the living standards of our people. The increasing demand of power arising from the expansion of economic activities in the country also makes it compelling for government to redouble our efforts in the energy sector. The strategy is to gradually replace the old generator sets with reliable ones and maintain a single national grid. Besides providing sustainable energy for all, it is equally necessary to work towards cost-reflective electricity tariffs in a systematic manner and within the right regulatory framework. We remain committed to the socio-economic development objectives as outlined in our National Development Plan. The AU 2063 Agenda and the AU EU Partnership for Green Transition and Energy Access. Accordingly, the energy sector has a critical role to play for the realization of these mileposts. In delivering his statement at the auspicious occasion, the managing director of NAWIC, Mr. Nani Duara, stated that the inauguration of the power plant will significantly um, reduce the demand for electricity in the country. He added that the recent developments in the power supply sector will considerably reduce the cost of energy in the country. <music> Earlier this month, uh, President Adam Obaro inaugurated the Gambia Printing and Publishing Corporation's book printing machine, which has the capacity to print 20,000 books per hour. The $50 million machine seeks to produce quality and affordable exercise books in the country without having to rely on imported ones. The accomplishment of this Gambia Printing and Publishing Corporation GPPC project is a huge development as it borders on board education and information communication technology, ICT. 
for obvious reasons. ICT is one of the critical enablers in the National Development Plan 2018-2021 for the realization of equitable access to basic services within the context of good governance and accountability. The exercise book production machine being commissioned today is worth about $50 million. It has come at a time when the impact of COVID-19 pandemic has brought about considerable delays in procuring goods and services from abroad. Consequently, having such a facility in the country will greatly help henceforth to guarantee timely provision of exercise book for our schools. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, by virtue of its mandate, the GPPC is entrusted with the responsibility of providing efficient printing, printing production services on a commercial basis for and on behalf of the government. The public enterprises, non-governmental organizations, and the general public. Their mandate embraces printing, publishing, distributing, and marketing books and other literary materials. Hence, the justification for investing heavily in this project. According to the GPPC director, Momodu Sise, the machine's ability will meet the needs of the entire country and the region. Adding that the Gambia is shifting from buying to selling and exporting. He applauded cabinet for giving GPPC exclusive printing rights to all government revenue materials. Now on to another story. In his capacity as the Chancellor of the University of the Gambia, President Barry annually presides over the convocation of the institution and this year marks the 13th convocation of the University of the Gambia. Here is an excerpt of his statement at the ceremony. The premise of this address is that one of the roles of the university is to groom good citizens for meaningful adult life that is positive, rewarding, and fulfilling. Generally, University life is expected to equip students with experiences, higher analytical skills, creative thinking, and the ability to explore and act on useful knowledge. This should save the students' behavior and thoughts for transformation into impactful citizens. I am optimistic that to meet the expectations of your families, communities, alma mater, friends, and the nation as a whole, this graduation ceremony will help you, the young graduates, to reflect further on the meaning of life, its challenges and opportunities for a successful adult life and good democratic citizenship. Life may mean different things to us, but the general rules is that choices and priorities have to be made wisely in order to be able to handle the struggles and opportunities that characterize it, the world of. For many successful people, the concept and purpose of life should be reflected in our actions. Hence, we should ask ourselves Searching questions to guide our behavior and actions. As head of state, I urge you to consider, among others, such questions as Are we content with the way society is? What can we do positively as individuals and collectively as a people to change the negative and harmful elements around us? How can we usefully and honestly serve our nation and society at large? 
What values and principles must we respect and never compromise? My government acknowledges the significant strides registered in the higher education sector over the last couple of years. Not to mention other qualifications, the Gambia can now boast of many masters and PhD degree holders who live and work in country or outside. We appreciate these achievements and assure you that education is always the given top priority by my government. I sincerely thank the staff and lecturers of the UTG for delivering in country the much needed education service and programs. At the launch of the Organization for Transformative Smallholder Agriculture Roots Project, President Baru challenged the youth and women to take full advantage of the opportunities that the project presents to improve their economic status. The 80 million project, funded by the International Fund for Agriculture Development, is meant to improve food security, nutrition, and smallholder farmers' resilience to climate change in the Gambia. Additionally, the project seeks to increase agricultural productivity and access to markets for enhanced food security and nutrition and resilience of family farms and farmer organizations. Here is an excerpt of his statement. Ladies and gentlemen, we should remind ourselves that the Roots Project specifically targets women and youth for effective and profitable participation in rice and vegetable value chains. This is highly relevant to our development strategy as contained in the national Development Plan 2018-2021. Knowing very well that the female population in the Gambia is at the heart of these important value chains. We welcome initiatives and projects that ensure that the women have the requisite capacity and resources to improve their lives and livelihood skills. I challenge and encourage all hard-working and vibrant women and youth farmers to take full advantage of the opportunities offered by the Roots Project as a life-changing vehicle to upgrade their economic status. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, aside from the women, the youth of the country have a central role to play in national development. I believe strongly that they hold the key to the future. With their active participation, the national target sets for agricultural growth and our overall development goals have a greater chance of success within their timelines. To realize this, we encourage the youth, as always, to broaden their participation in development enterprises. These are numerous prospects in the agriculture sector for the women and youth alike to improve their lot and contribute more to the country's GDP. All of us should tirelessly hammer this message home. Viewers, before we wrap up this episode of the President's Diary, let's take a look at the farewell ceremony of 40 Senegalese and Mary that form part of the economic contingent in the Gambia. Following the completion of their four-year deployment as part of the economic peacekeeping contingent in the Gambia, President Barrow awarded certificates of appreciation to 40 personnel in a ceremony held at the State House in Banjo. Addressing the gathering, President Barrow heaped praises on the Senegalese contingent for their exemplary hard work, professionalism and patriotism. He added that they have been awarded the certificates of appreciation to show that the government truly and sincerely appreciate their contributions, saying it is a reference that will go long into the future to show they have done well. <music> Viewers, uh, that story of the economic farewell brings us to the end of this episode of the President's Diary. Um, thank you for the pleasure of your company and do join us for another exciting episode of the President's Diary. 
I have been your presenter, Zainab Fahal.